think noise Mario and my topic is self-sustainability. And then with the current population rising at, at an alarming rate, the need for sustainability is actually on the rise. Um, my first point is gonna be that increased population puts a strain on agriculture. The second one's gonna be how the increased population also puts a strain on environment. And then we need the environment to actually uphold increasing population. And my third point is that the more people that are coming because of the population rising at such a long rate, is going to increase the labor force in a negative way. Well, it's going to increase in a positive way, but it's going to um, mess up sustainability in a negative way. So, so on agriculture, in the last century, our world population has actually quadrupled. Food has been cultivated and distributed faster, but many countries cannot support themselves. Throughout the world, there's starvation. Um, many countries are not able to produce their own crops, like um, the Department of Agriculture and Food has stated that California actually produces half of the berry, half of the berries and fruits that the whole nation uh, actually makes in total. Population increase and second levels of available food is the main reason, is one of the main reasons why developing countries cannot provide for its citizens. There's less food readily available for to actually uphold the citizens. And the increase in the population lowers capital per person, essentially lowering the quality of life. Because the more kids are actually like being born is the more um, money you have to be distributed to each one. And for the environment, um, if we do not uphold our environment, it will actually put a strain on resources. Supply and demand are the rate of reasons for the overexploitation of resources. The UN Agriculture, oh, the United Nations Agriculture Organization estimated that Sub-Saharan Africa and China are actually two of the highest countries that have uh, Management and hunger because of limited resources. Which in sub Saharan Africa is actually over 2 million, and in China it's over 500 million. Um, also in China, the New York Times reports that it actually produces, or it actually consumes 47% of the world's fossil fuels. Um, manufacturing industries and in Beijing, there's actually over 500, no, 5 million cars being used that's actually polluting the atmosphere. If they're using fossil fuel and not renewable energy like um, electric cars and not using biofuel like algae, new biofuel. And then in uh, I think the way that the population is gonna affect the labor force is more people are actually gonna start using machines, they're gonna have to use their cars, they're gonna have to use fuel or electricity that's not renewable. So the more people are actually working, it's gonna create a need for um, we're gonna create a need for oh, we need for more resources and um, resources that are actually gonna deplete themselves faster. That um, since 1963, there's been two acts: the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act. Clean Air Act that actually reduced the amount of pollution that's been um, released in the atmosphere, which actually caused a, a need for people to do. Um, to research and focus on renewable energies. And by focusing on renewable energies, people will not be um, depleting the resources that are not renewable. And, but there are other ways to actually um, become more self-sustainable by like electric cars or like solar power and wind, uh, wind power. Those um, sources, or oh, those tools actually Eliminate the need for um, for resources being depleted. And algae biofuel is actually a step in sustainability, even though it isn't an ideal fuel yet. Which is still being protected. It actually requires a lot of uh, water and a lot of land to actually grow enough algae to make a reasonable amount of fuel. A study published in 2016 by the United States Department of Energy estimates that the bioeconomy has already directly generated over 200,000 jobs and has potential to create about uh, over a million jobs by 2030, if the United States makes actually a dedicated effort to advance the bioeconomy. So including that the increasing population is putting a strain on resources and the environment, and that's why sustainability is necessary.
Do you have a copy of the final draft for me? Yeah. Thank you. All right, several things that I think are pretty solid about the speech. I like the preview that you have at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, as you get into the body of the speech, there are four or five uh, good source citations that you provide us that give us some good information, and I, f I like the fact that you're giving us the sources. Uh, sometimes I think the information's a little bit incomplete or it's uh, a little narrow, but uh, you've got the right idea on uh, the citations. I think you generally talk to the audience pretty effectively, and I thought you had a clear exit at the end. And now there are a couple of problems with both the exit and the opening and that the first is that the proposition has two parts to it still and that's a little complicated. Uh, the phrasing of it doesn't exactly clarify what it is that what inference it is that we're supposed to be making here. I think that's problematic. Now the the the, the preview that you provide tends to suggest that there's a problem because there are going to be increased demands on agriculture, because there are going to be increased environmental degradation, and because there are going to be more people, all of this is going to hurt the sustainability of the planet. So I'm going, okay, that's fine. But then there are arguments in other places that suggest that uh, it's the sustainability thing that is causing some of these issues for agriculture instead of the other way around, uh, and that's a little bit confusing. Um, the body of the speech, despite the fact that you had a good preview setting it up, I don't think that it was well organized uh, when you're presenting it. The, there aren't very clear signposts of what the supporting structure is going to be, and there aren't smooth transitions. So the evidence is getting plugged in sometimes. I'm not always sure what inference it is you want us to draw from here. I'm not, for example, you had early evidence about how much California provides of the country's uh, fruits and berries. I'm going, okay, so what does that mean? that they can't provide these other places because of the population or because California has an expanding population, there's going to be a reduction in what's going on. I don't know where I'm supposed to go with this data and you should be giving those inferences. Uh, I don't think there's a dispute that uh, pollution is caused by the use of fossil fuels. Uh, nobody's going to be challenging that. Uh, the question concerns uh, how significant that pollution is. Are we doing enough to control it? Uh, are there alternatives that would work? And you mentioned a whole series of alternatives at one point, and I'm waiting for the evidence that shows that any of those things could replace the use of fossil fuels. You mentioned electric cars and algae-powered uh, vehicles, and I'm waiting for some information that suggests that that's going to be something that works. The closest you get is that biofuel argument at the end that mentions how many jobs biofuels have created, which is pretty good. Uh, but I'm not sure it actually comes close to talking about the number of jobs that are dependent on fossil fuels. Uh, and you yourself has, have suggested that we don't really have any biofuel cars that are functioning right now, so how is Beijing going to take its five million cars and put them on biofuels? That's a little confusing. You know, I, I, there's a lot of stuff that's connected here, but I don't think that it's been put together in a way that makes the argument that you're trying to make as clear as it needs to be. Um, and, and, and I mean, that's, that's the general issue there. We don't need to say anything more about that. Thank you.